right, here we are. A couple years here, let's talk for a second. This right here is the sun. It's the base of the back. Okay, uh, see the sun. I'm going to move down where it's a little quieter. Where am I? I am in Tampa. If you're a student of mine, remember I told you I had training for these next two days. If you look behind me here, you can see the Tampa Convention Center. And then the focus, hopefully. It's a nice, nice little overcast, but it's beautiful weather. Santiago, oh, hey Michelle. He's in the restaurant. I stepped outside to make this video. All right, so while I got you guys here, I want to tell you the story of Cabeza de Vaca. We walked outside, I saw that sign there, and I said, oh my God, it's my favorite story to tell when I'm teaching exploration. Now, if you know the history, you probably know that Hernan Cortes conquered the Aztec, right? Oh, hush, okay. Anyway, Cortes conquered the Aztec, right? But there's so much more to this story than that. All right, hear me out. Hernan Cortez was just some low guy on the totem pole in Cuba, right? Well, the governor of Cuba, wanted uh, the guy named Diego Velasquez, wanted to go to Mexico where he would make more money, okay? Well, guess what? He sends to the King of Spain, King of Spain gives him permission. He tells his number two, Pam Pamphilo de Narvaez, say, hey, you go out to Mexico and we'll see what we can do. Unbeknownst to Velasquez, Cortez, makes his own expedition. Velasquez finds out, runs to the doctors, why have you betrayed me? Well, Cortez gets to Mexico, works his way up, talks to uh, Montezuma. I'm sure you've heard of Montezuma's Revenge, right? I'm a little blurry. Well, he can't really do much because he's on an island with 250,000 Aztec. Doesn't sound much like conquering now, does it? All right. Well, here's the deal. Velasquez tells Narvaez, goes, you, go get Cortez, bring him back to me. So, Narvaez brings about 1,500 men. Cortez only had about 1,000 men. He lands, finds a tribe that's at war with the Aztec, and then he makes his base camp. And what does he do? He waits. Big mistake, okay? Now, Cortez says, you know what? I can't conquer the Aztec, but I hear Narvaez is there, but I have something he doesn't have, and that's Aztec gold. So he takes the gold, bribes some of Narvaez's men, sneak attacks, Narvaez loses an eye, Cortez wins. He is able to then take both armies. Now he conquers the Aztec. That's the history I'm sure you've all heard of. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. Narvaez, after seven years in jail, remember he's missing an eye, gets out and he says, you know what, let me redeem myself. Let me start a new Spanish colony and we'll go northern Mexico. Well, he does a good job getting his crew together, getting everyone, except he doesn't hire a very smart pilot. Now, this pilot, doesn't take into account the Gulf Stream, so instead of going from Cuba over to Mexico, he caught the Gulf Stream, landed in Tampa. And guess where I'm standing? Exactly. Now, so, what happens is, there's a hurricane, takes away a ship, so he has to walk. The natives realize what's going on with these Europeans, they go, oh, you want gold? Keep going north. So he goes north. Well, eventually a lot of bad stuff happens. I'm gonna keep this short, because I'm almost up to four minutes on the video here. He makes it up towards the panhandle, realizes that they've gone the wrong way, realizes there's no gold, says, you know what, what if we build some rafts and those go across the gulf? Well, a storm takes away most of the rafts. The men that survive are captured, put in prison. A few escape with their lives, you know, whether they died in prison or they got away. And eventually they start working their way south. One of those men is Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, the guy from the sign that I just showed you, the marker. Well, him and two other men are working their way south. They end up oh so close to the Spanish settlement. And the men that are guiding said, well, you guys are, must be shaman. You must help us. You are healers. And they turn north. It's the craziest thing. Well, eventually, and I'm abbreviating, abbreviating this so much. Eventually, they say, you know what? We have to go south. So here are these three men working their way south. And all of a sudden, they see men on horseback coming towards them. Well... Who they be? Spaniards on a raid looking for people to enslave. And they come across these three men thinking they're going to pick them up, and they start speaking Spanish to them. They just don't speak Spanish, this is odd. Turns out one of those men was Alvar Nunez Cabeza de Vaca, another man, and then get this a slave named Estebanico. 
Now, why is this a big deal? Because this is happening in the 1520s, okay? We're talking years and years before St. Augustine, and here we have Spaniards roaming North America. Pretty cool story, and here we are in Tampa, where it all happened, or where it started, I should say. All right, so go ahead and hit a like. If you see this video, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what's going on, and you know what? Share this out. Let people know I did this.